All right, we're going to do a every mechanic uh, story here. It's really a story, and how we really learn things is from other people's mistakes and other people's successes or whatnot. So we've been doing a lot. You're just going to see a video coming up pretty soon that talks about the procedures we want to do every day and duplicate. You hear in all of them, we talk about organization and so on. But this, this one would probably have caught most people in the same spot we were in, and, and that is we're in trouble. We had the bike all the way back together. We were getting ready to start the machine, and the kicker would not return, and it was jamming up. And we know that we diligently tested that kicker and that its spring would return. You want to bring some light over here? That'd be awesome. Or above, yeah. We know that it worked perfectly fine. But when we tested this, our clutch basket wasn't on, and then we you know, had it on here. Uh, there was multiple stages. We call them 140 moments. You've been hearing us talk about that too. So we had the kicker on, we had the clutch basket, and we had this primary gear on. Go ahead and take a look at this. But we were waiting for these two parts. And so just to move forward and make, pro you know, make progress, these were not on here, but everything else was. Clutch pack, and, and so everything was done, worked perfect. And when we got these parts in, we finished the motor, put it together, and all of a sudden now it, it doesn't work. There's, there was a problem. So when we took it apart, I want you to see here what happens is we get to one point and it locks up. Can you hear this? You hear that? Yeah. Okay, I go the other way and I, I'll find a point and it locks up. And this spring was acting goofy. And when you don't have the outer cover on here and it doesn't have its support, that could be kind of deceiving anyway. But but right now I'm like, it's, it's like I'm caught or jammed or stuck or something. So we've had this off a few times. So we, we removed everything off the crankshaft, isolated it to make sure the crank turned fine. It was good. We checked the transmission on independently. It was fine, no problems. Both shafts on here, no problem. And this was jamming up and binding on us. We found a little, uh, chunk of crap in here and and like i said before though this needs to be uh supported on its bearing to fully operate where there's no issues but it was it was acting just like we did before upon that you do the next thing and you start to realize well maybe there's something going on here when we flip this over all of a sudden get a flashlight on there you can actually see there was a chunk of aluminum wedged in one of the gear teeth and that makes sense why it would go 360 in one degree lock up turn it the other way 360 degrees and it would lock up there well here's where here's where the problem starts to get to be about the mechanic about the technician we're all going to have stuff happen but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take this chunk out and what i'm trying not to do is clean it i don't want to ruin any evidence and when i say clean it i'm wiping it off but i don't want to use carb cleaners or anything else at this point if i don't have to so what we noticed is it looks like a tooth how many of you viewers out there probably be pretty nervous right now yeah because when we think of teeth we think of gears transmissions water pumps a lot of things but what we know is it's aluminum and we just sat here and stared at this like where would this come from and then since we we're a training institution we started thinking it could have came off another bench it could have came off a tool and here's where it was greatness from the student and any other technician the person that worked on it had to go back and thoroughly think about everything they touched every tool they used everything they did and what uh she remembered right away was the blue that blue anodizing is what really gave us a, a clue it looked like a marker to us and what remember is we have this tool the motion pro uh, gear jammer it's a great tool but we could see here there's our missing chunk okay now here's what you know there's there's good and bad about this we found the problem let me show you how this is actually just installed real quick we've done it in other videos but what's happening here kind of to make sense of what we were working with is this tool gets jammed in here you can see here how we install this in between a couple of sets of teeth and that allows us to torque this fastener down by jamming these two together well let's let's take a look at this tool and understand this this little magnet helps hold it on the steel but it's aluminum that's a soft metal and it's it's going to break or it's going to be abused over time especially with as many technicians are using this here at the training school it just obviously is time for a new one this thing has seen its day another thing that we really like to use here are uh, pennies soft copper like this 
and you could see here here's one that was sandwiched in between the gears okay that's a nice uh, tool to have this this motion pro is really inexpensive what's really nice about it is the magnet and the little storage capability but here's where let's let you hand that back here's where we failed you know you know i hate to use that word but it's really not much else to use it where we failed as a technician was we used a tool and then what we did is we went like this and so what this whole video is honestly going to be about is every mechanic should know because my student knew that this part was good they cleaned it they inspected it they knew everything was good they put it in place it wouldn't make any sense to have to look at all the teeth of this again because it's been done it's checked off the checklist but literally what failed once again was just not inspecting the tool uh putting it in a tool in its box really quick and uh, an opportunity was missed to catch that all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to take this tool out of service because it's damaged and it's just going to hurt something we talk about that we're going to go ahead make sure no other little pieces fell down that's pretty important we're going to put this thing back together we're going to start this dang dirt bike because it's yours and i know that you're dying to test your work and uh we're going to consider the fact that we really learned how important it is to inspect tools and not once they're all the way back in the tool room we need to inspect them that the mechanic is responsible for inspecting them on the bench sound good yeah hey guys and gals hey uh in summary on this what i want to talk about is just the technician's responsibility to uh, really considered a, a skill set to be able to have the willingness and desire to inspect these shared tools before you use them and after. You know, many times people come up and they say, oh, the, the tool's broke, or oh, you know, I didn't know, or it was already damaged, or this or that, or whatnot. And realistically, if you were checking the tool before you used it, you're probably a lot less likely that you would hurt yourself or hurt the piece of equipment because of just taking that step. You know, here at the college, we have this uh, tool sign-out sheet and it doesn't work that great you know as, even though it's an attempt to try and uh, be diligent about these tools the problem that we have here is that you don't know what you don't know and so a lot of you technicians are putting tools back that you have very little experience with with the assumption that you haven't hurt the tool and what I really need you to think about is to take that tool and take it to a mentor or take it to a seasoned mechanic and uh, within your shop you're gonna have that you know and uh, um, and here at the school, take it to your instructor and say, listen, I'm done using this tool. I don't have a lot of experience with it. Make sure all the parts are there. Something wasn't left out. Or the fact of just looking at the tool to know it wasn't damaged. I don't know how many times I've opened like a compression tester and saw the threads were all banged up because too long an end was used and it hit the valves. Well, what what's going on with those valves now? They've hit that tool. And it could be that they damaged the valve itself. It could be that you used electrical tester and the leads sat across the hot exhaust and melted or different things. You just don't know what you don't know. Uh, so I really recommend, uh, um, you know, until you get, you know, years of experience using different tools to make sure and, uh, and have that looked at, you know, have an accountability partner on that. All, in the end, all we're trying to do is not hurt the, hurt the bike or hurt ourselves. In this particular example, I had a lot of lost time. Uh, no personal injury, obviously, but just a lot of lost time of everything, you know, put back on, antifreeze filled up, oil filled up, and then just have to drain it all, all back down. And what really sucks is that you get that knot in your stomach, like, oh no, what did I do? And the next thing you see happen is, is the technician really loses their confidence. Anytime you got to start pulling something back apart, the chances of making more mistakes is really likely. Uh, I mean, ask ask any seasoned shop out there how many times that where they saw a mechanic go to fix one mistake and then made three more in the process out of being nervous, hot, uh, frustrated, things like that. So uh, think about it. Do these steps, uh, and I think you'll find some success that you won't have to, uh, you know, as often maybe have these uh, delays. So keep on running.